BYU runs a lot of pistol, it feels like, and uh, I, th- I don't think that's unnecessarily uncommon in college football, but what challenges does it present when a team can play out of pistol? Um, s- similar to what we kind of talked about last week with Arizona running stuff under center. They don't give you a lot of pre-snap tells. There's probably some things that they can do out of pistol um, uh, that, that could give you problems, and there's probably a few th- ways that pistol might limit some of the things that they do. So, um, you know, it, it, it's it's just another – layer of things you know that uh, that people have to read and and uh so any the more multiplicity you get with backfield sets with formations with motions and stuff that the more complicated defense gets and so um that's just one more thing guys have to think about when keenan made that interception last week could you tell that he was in line to do that the whole way or did he just catch up to it he's he's like happened? a streak of lightning wasn't he i mean i i saw I saw our, we call him an overlap player. I saw our, our player come from the backside. VJ he was very close to that play also. Been interesting. Uh, if Keenan wouldn't have made it, how close he would have been to it. And I saw, I saw Keenan, you know, because he, he was a visual player, so he should have been able to, to see that whole thing uh, unfold, uh, but just to cover the ground that he does. I and mean, that's one of his best attributes is his speed and, and his ball skills when he gets to the point of attack. So that was a, that was a big deal. I mean, him making that play probably uh, turned the tide of that game. Your defensive line kind of take hold of that game, what they were able to do against a really good offensive line. It was line. awesome. And when you look at the stat sheet and you say, we had one sack, I think that's what it was. I mean, it wasn't, you know, wasn't numbers that are going to blow you away, but I, I could pull five or six examples where Fafita in weeks past would have gotten out of the pocket on people that we did a great job of keeping them in. You know, Brendan Mott, stuff will be everybody. I, I shouldn't single people out, but they did a phenomenal job with what we were talking about with rush lanes because that was one of the ways that I thought Arizona could get some explosive plays was by getting that kid out of the pocket and getting into the scramble mode. We've had some issues with that this year already, and they just never let him out. With Red mobility, does that kind of translate to the, the same, same thing? Yeah, it's the same, it's the same uh, philosophy. Blitzer's going to have to know where they're going. Um, uh, rushers are going to have to understand where they belong in the rushes. And um, guys in the back end are going to have to do a good job with their scramble rules. And that's something that we've we've worked on to try to improve. Sometimes scenarios come up that are difficult. You know, we've run into a couple of those. But uh, but people have to understand what the issues are and work collectively to fix them. What kind of momentum is this defense playing with coming off Arizona and going to BYU? It's an interesting question because I, I don't know. Um, I still don't know what this group is. You know, uh, I can tell you this. We've got, I don't know, I'm not going to name names, but we've got a a good core group of guys that I know are going to compete every week. I know they're going to understand every detail. I have no fear about them in any one-on-one situations. They're as good as there is in the country. And then we've got a group of guys, about a half a dozen of them, that are developing that um, we're going to go as they go. You know, if they're really good, we're going to be really good on defense. And if they make mistakes, we're going to have some of what happened in Tulane, you know, and, and some of it's just youth, some of it's inexperience, you know, we're working through all that stuff. But the better that group is, the better we're going to be as a unit. The defense has created three turnovers, and they've all been pretty important turnovers over the last two weeks. So how much of that is, I guess, being in the right place at the right time, or how much of that is a player being able to make a play in the yeah, right I mean, situation? To be able to finish on a ball like Keenan did, that's that's just an individual being a really good player. To being able to scoop and score like Jack did, that's a that's a that's a guy that's got guts to go make a play. Um, you know, we work on turnovers. I'm sure everybody in the country works on turnovers. Um, we do we do turnover circuits. We talk about it all the time. We're talking about it daily. We're hammering it. We're we're trying to finish uh, with strips on ball carriers. All that stuff. Um, sometimes they come and sometimes they don't. You know, I wish I could say we're getting turnovers because I'm such a great coach or, you know, we've got some secret recipe, but we don't. It, you know, sometimes you could go two weeks and not get one. Sometimes you might get five in a game. And, um, you know, some of it has to do with your mentality. Some of it's luck at the draw, to be honest with you. Um, some of it's how careless an, an opponent is with the ball. And, uh, you know, well, you combine those things and you're in the right place at the right time, you get them in bunches. Damian and Uso, a good tag team there at D-Tackle. Yeah, well, for starters, you know, both of them have a tremendous ability, you know, and, and probably uh, both of them are smart football players. Damian's a really smart football player, um, has a great grasp of not only what he's doing, but what's happening around him. And um, and Uso's got just such tremendous physical ability, you know, and, and so when you combine those guys, um, 
as a one-two punch, we don't care who's in there. I don't even know most of the time, you know, who's in there. I, I just, uh, we're rolling and we feel good, equally confident with both of them in there. And, and I think the pe- people around them feel the same way. Depth ideal for a game at altitude, late night? Well, I'm nervous about that. I don't know, you know. I, we haven't talked about it a whole bunch. Um, I feel like we can roll guys in. I don't, um, I don't know what the pace of the game's going to be. Um, you know, if, if we're able to get off the field, and and uh, then it won't be an issue. If we're having 17 play extended drives, yeah, th- I'm sure it'll catch up to us. So, um, I don't know. I, you know, it, it'll only be a factor if we allow it to be a factor, and I don't want there to be any excuses for what we're doing. BYU doesn't have, I guess, one go-to wide receiver. They've been pretty spread out in terms of catches and targets. Uh, what have you seen from their wide receiver room, and is that just a nature of them scheming the different guys open? Or I think I think I think that's the strength of their offense. Honestly, I think is their receiver room. I think they got a lot of good football players in there. I think um, Chase Roberts is a guy that stands out to me. Maybe um, not that any of them aren't good football players, but I just notice him a, a lot making plays. Number two, and and uh, um, I think they have uh, good speed. I think they have tremendous size. Um, you know, sometimes you run into guys that are that are long and stuff, but they're 180 pounds, and these guys aren't that. Um, I think they do a good job schematically of getting those guys open and putting them in places. And I, I don't think offensively they really care who it is. I think they feel like all those guys can make plays, and so I mean we're going to have to do a job on all of them.